the assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Xavier Esport Zamora, Head of Government of the Principality of Andorra. I have, may I request protocol to escort His Excellency? I have great pleasure in welcoming the Head of Government of the Principality of Andorra and invite him to address the General Assembly. Señor President, Señor Secretary General, Excellencies, Señores, Señores y Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to begin my statement to the 74th General Assembly of the United Nations with words of congratulations to His Excellency Mr. Tihani Mohamed Bande on his election as President, and I wish to underscore how right he was in choosing the theme of this session. Mobile, galvanizing multinational efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. Preparations will soon begin to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, a great assembly of all the peoples of the world born out of the overarching objective of preventing violent conflicts between countries following two devastating world wars. A few years following its inception, the United Nations began to expand its scope of action and began to focus on improving living conditions for persons. And if we look at the themes of the last General Assemblies, we will realize that the issue of development has become the core of the multilateral agenda. And please note that I said the multilateral agenda and not just the United Nations agenda because the 17 SDGs had the virtue from the outset of focusing on the priorities and the lines of action of various forums of regional or sectoral nature. By way of example, the Principality of Andorra served for two years as a pro-temporary secretariat for the Ibero-American Ibero Summit under the theme Innovation for Develop Sustainable Development 2030 objective. Because going back to the issue, theme of this assembly, what is at stake is galvanizing multilateral efforts for development and sustainability in all spheres of life. If we are to have sustainable development, it is absolutely essential that we have joint action of all stakeholders in society. And for this reason, Andorra has recently adopted a national strategic plan to implement the 2030 Agenda. This is an inclusive document that will enable us to accelerate the implementation of the goals established by this assembly. Without an improvement in the living conditions of people, any policy to prevent a violent conflict would be a weak policy. In the words of a former Secretary General of this organization between 1997 and 2006, Kofi Allen, just as war is the worst enemy of development, there is no better way of preventing conflicts than to have healthy and balanced development. This concept of development, he healthy and balanced development, is what we are now referring to as sustainable development. By the same token, we cannot seek to have sustainable development without first having just and peaceful societies. And there are no just and peaceful societies without effective respect for human rights. Therefore, Andorra reiterates once again its full support for the International Criminal Court as the main independent and impartial organ for tackling impunity for the most serious crimes. A year ago, we welcomed the expansion of the jurisdiction of the court over crimes of aggression, and we will continue to advocate resolutely for extension of its jurisdiction. Mr. President, eradication of poverty, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. These are the four goals that probably most effectively frame the challenges facing the international community at this point. The case of uh, poverty is a case in point because all global challenges are interrelated. Massive uh, migrations and forced uh, displacements are rooted in extreme poverty and war, and the consequences of global warming are being felt more intensely in the most impoverished communities. 
the digital reach, which may be an opportunity to reduce inequalities and address gaps in infrastructures in various points of the world, varies much based on the level of development and persistent phenomena such as violence, terrorism, and violent extremism are fed by poverty and marginality. The second SDG development objective set by the President of General Assembly is quality education. Let us be clear, there is no better weapon for empowerment and to overcome poverty than to increase access to quality education. This is an issue that has focused most of Andorra's action in our multilateral fora over the last few years. Of course, because we are a small country with few natural resources, we are a country that also depends exclusively, almost exclusively on the strength and talent of our people, and we are therefore fully conversant with the positive impact that quality education may have. In Andorra, for decades now, we have had three public education systems coexisting. They're free and can be voluntarily chosen. There's a French, Spanish, and Andorran systems that make for a multilingual society prepared to tackle globalization. Andorrans are traditionally trilingual because we speak Catalan, our own language, Castilian Spanish, and French. And for some time now, we have included English as an international language. And the sizable Portuguese community living in our country means that Portuguese is carrying increasingly increasing weight. It is no small wonder that our country has young people who can speak fluently five languages, and the language of the principality, and four other languages that open up the doors for them so that they can communicate with hundreds of millions of persons across the world. Furthermore, it is our intention that as we seek to tackle the challenges of an increasingly globalized world, we will gear our efforts towards education towards a democratic citizenry respective, respectful of human rights, cultural diversity, and the environment. Over the past few years, we have promoted inclusive educational policies aimed at making sure that our youth have the necessary tools to develop their potential in a multicultural and global world. And it is for this reason that we reaffirm our commitment to the international community to promote strides towards promoting quality education as a mechanism that will guarantee equality of opportunities. Your Excellencies, climate action is the multilateral line of action par excellence. In a global world, no major challenge can be overcome without cooperation among countries and no major goal can be achieved unilaterally. However, even though strides, meaningful strides can be made in reducing inequalities or in promoting education at the national scale, it is conversely impossible to tackle time climate change from a purely unilateral perspective because environmental policy in a single country, however ambitious it may be, is utterly ineffective without action at global scale. To give you an example that I'm fully familiar with, global warming directly threatens the delicate ecological balance of our high altitude country. It is a threat over the long term to our ski sector, which is one of the pillars of our society. However, however much efforts may be made, we Andorans cannot alone rev reverse this trend. Not Andorra, not any other country, no matter how great or p powerful they may be. I am aware that if we are to implement effective measures to combat climate change, it may be difficult and costly, especially for the major industrial powers. However, the major challenges facing the world require major global commitments. If you'll allow me the analogy, I will remind you that 10 years ago, there was a severe financial crisis that compel compelled us to lay the foundation for the rules, of the rules of the game internationally. And many financial markets, such as Andorra, had to make major efforts to be more transparent and to cooperate in tax matters. This was no easy task, whether for us or for any other small country having the similar characteristics such as ours. But if we were capable a decade ago to undertake these commitments and to fulfill them, the industrialized countries should now be capable to fulfill the agreements that we all subscribe to. The world is calling upon us to act resolutely and decisively to 
tackle the climate emergency. Every Friday, hundreds of thousands of young people across the planet planet call on us to guarantee their future. This is not for their economic progress or the benefits of the welfare state, but rather in the most literal sense and most basic sense, they're calling for the very existence of human life on the earth to be protected. And it seems to me that we are at a critical juncture when the debates around the scientific evidence of climate change have already been overcome and the discussion on who has to do more or less has taken a back seat. We have a roadmap ahead of us. The agreement on the climate agreement that was signed in this very room solemnly in April 2016 and therefore the only thing that we need to do now is to implement at the national scale the content of that agreement, which is, let me remind you, is not an optimal agreement, but rather an agreement on the very least that we need to do. And we will have to broaden its scope in the future, I am sure. Over the last few two years in Andorra, we implemented an ambitious plan to overhaul our development model to make it sustainable and to contribute to containing global warming. In our country, the two main sources of CO2 emissions are uh, vehicles and heating. For this reason, we rolled out a direct promotion of reconverting our fleet into electric vehicles, and we implemented a program of ride-sharing and renewed our transport network to make it more sustainable. As of the 1st of January next year, all buildings being built will have to have practically zero energy consumption. Alongside this, we have set up an ambitious public and private investment plan to increase our national electric production, which actually meets only 20% of our demand, and we our goal is to cover 33% in 2030 and 50% in 2050. Our goal is to have at least 75% of our own electricity pr production coming from renewable sources. Likewise, the government intends to forge partnerships with civil society to convert linear productive models in circular economy models which will not generate waste or negative externalities. And we also want to involve private agents to show that sustainability is not an impediment to economic development, but rather is an opportunity to generate new sectors of activity and expand industries dedicated to collection, retrofitting, and recycling, and to generate wealth and jobs. This is not about having to choose between economic development and sustainability. We have moved beyond that perspective. What is at stake is Understanding that in the long term, the only possible economic development is sustainable development. Mr. President, as we select the theme of this, the 74th General Assembly, we are also being called upon to mobilize our multilateral efforts for inclusion. Unlike reduction of poverty, quality education, or climate action, inclusion is not in and of itself a sustainable development goal. In my opinion, rather, it is a cross-cutting objective, I believe that inclusion is even more important because vested in it is the concept of sustainability. No action, no policy, no institutional order is sustainable if it is not, if it is inclu not inclusive. Inclusion is like trust, a type of cement that maintains the unity of societies. Many of the countries in this room are representative democracies based on parliaments and governments that represent the will of their citizens and who challenge and structure the various individual wills, converting them in government programs that address the dreams and needs of people. This General Assembly is the maximum expression at the international level of the rationale of representative democracy because the United Nations action also can be used to channel, to channel and structure the will and lines of action of the various member states. But this rationale, the logic of representative democracy is in danger and it has been besieged by anti-democratic movements or populist movements that are calling for uh, less direct democracy. The response to the ISC 
this crisis of representativeness and of institutions does not have to be less representativity or less institutions. Rather, we have to have institutions that are really effective when it comes to responding to the needs of people and institutions where people can actually recognize themselves. Because very often, those who criticize these institutions most for being underrepresentative are the ones that are weakening these institutions. The response to the crisis of representative institutions and multilateral institutions does not have to be an anti-institutional reaction. Because let us ask ourselves, will the world be better? Was the world a better world before the United Nations? Was Europe a better place before the existence of the European Union? Our countries are better were our countries better before we had our national parliaments? The ob response is obvious. Before, given the crisis of our institutions, what we have to do is improve our institutions, not weaken them even further. Reforming or adapting democratic institutions to make them more representative is a challenge, both at national and global scales. It has always been a challenge. And in 2019, Andorra is representing is celebrating 600 years of uninterrupted existence of its General Council, the Parliament, which since 1419 represents the will of Andorrans. Over these six centuries, our institutions have experienced various moments of adaptation to better reflect the reality of our country. Sometimes the changes took hundreds of years to occur, and in on other occasions developments were much faster. 25 years ago, only one of the 28 members in our parliament was a woman. Now half of our parliamentarians in Andorra are women. Our history shows that institutions are more lasting when they are flexible and not rigid. For this reason, we support the initiative of the Secretary General to reform the United Nations on two tracks, making it more flexible and also more effective. And the roadmap on what it means to be effective is something that we have before us as well. We have to fulfill the SDGs and in so doing address most of the concerns and aspirations of the vast majority of the people on this planet. One of the major challenges of our time is to respond to those many people that see, feel excluded from our representative democratic institutions and excluded from development processes. In Andorra, we are working on promoting inclusion. We are rolling out an equality law, which we recently adopted, and we are working on a law on equality, effective equality between men and women, which directly and on an ongoing basis tackles this gender gap, pay gap, and the glass ceiling because the workplace is a battlefield for inclusion and equality, not only for women, but also for traditionally disadvantaged groups such as people with disabilities or youths that have not completed high school. Excellences, despite the inward focus, unilateral and national, nationalistic inward focus in various regions of the planet, the, the valid response to the major challenges of our time is effective and inclusive multilateralism. Effective in order to move forward on the road towards sustainable de development, both in the economic and social and environmental spheres, as well because progress that works only for a few eventually becomes insus unsustainable progress, and because institutions that only represent the will of a few end up becoming weak institutions. Andorra, faithful to its uh, track, its road towards peace, peaceful existence and integration of diversity supports now and forever the United Nations in building a multilateral order that seeks to ensure that there is sustainable development that comes through inclusion. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to, to thank the head of government of the Principality of Andorra for his statement. And I request protocol to escort His Excellency.